Okay. So, hi everyone. My name is Jessica Martinez. I'm a reference and instruction librarian and liaison to the College of Science here at the U of I Library. And today we're going to be talking about citation management with Zotero as part of the Graduate Student Essentials Workshop Series. So I'm excited that you're all here and that we're going to talk about this. I think it's going to be something really useful that's going to save you um, a lot of time and effort. So the first question is why use a citation manager? So a citation manager is um, a piece of software that creates citations for you. Um, this means that you don't even have to learn one single citation style and you definitely don't need to learn several different citation styles. Depending on um, where your research takes you and if you pursue public publication um, throughout your graduate um, grad student career, you might submit to journals that all have very, very different citation styles. And by using a citation manager, you don't have to put so much effort into learning all those different ones or changing them throughout. Um, so it'll save you a lot of time and effort. Citation managers um, can also help you organize and store your PDFs, your notes, and your bibliographies. It keeps you organized, keeps it all in one place, and helps you access those things that you found once over and over throughout the life of your project. Citation managers also allow you to collaborate with a team, um, whether you're working on a literature review or perhaps you're putting together a protocol application to do some kind of um, animal or human research, um, you can compile those literature reviews, those bibliographies on a citation manager. Um, really, when thinking about it, um, Citation managers just help you not be disorganized. Like, don't be this guy. Don't be Charlie Day in this photo. Um, so why use Zotero of all the citation managers? There's a lot out there. We'll talk a little bit about some more of your options, but why am I talking about Zotero today? Um, first, it's open source. It's not for profit, which means they won't sell your data. Um, Lots of them, you know, they're collecting data. Who knows what they're doing with it? So Tara won't do that. It's free. That's always great. Who doesn't want free stuff? Um, that also means that you can start using it as a student or employee here at the University of Idaho. And wherever you go, you can keep that same account. So you don't have to, you know, give it up if you know you change jobs or get a job somewhere else or become a student somewhere else. Um, there also with Zotero is there's online access and a downloadable application. We're going to talk about using both today. I think it's, it makes it very versatile. Um, means that you can switch computers, move between your laptop and your desktop, collaborate with people, use public terminals, um, and it's all very seamless and easy to use. So I promised we'd mention other citation managers. Um, Julissa, can you um, toss in the chat the citation management guide um, link? Because that's what I'm showing you a screenshot of here is we have, we have a little guide on the library website about all these different citation management options um, that are free um, for U of I students. And then these main ones are um, Zotero that we're talking about today, EndNote, which costs money, um, EndNote Web, which is free and you can access um, either through this website here or it's kind of tied in with Web of Science, or um, Mendeley, which is also um, free. And um, so if we are going through Zotero today or you start using it and you're like, man, this isn't for me, I don't like it. You know, that's cool. There's these other options available too. So just something to keep in mind. If you have been using a different citation manager um, and you want to make the switch to Zotero is they have a lot of support documentation on that on their website. Um, this uh, moving to Zotero link, which you can find in their help, um, help pages. So, um, if you're making the switch, um, 
there's there's help with that. Um, and then before we keep going, Julissa, can you also put the citing sources guide up in the, the web, the, the chat? Um, like the citation management guide, we also have a citing sources research guide on the library website, um, which is just in general, lots of links to helpful resources for citing sources. Um, we're not really going to focus on that today, but just so that you have it, I wanted want to have it in the chat. Okay, so let's get started with Zotero. Um, first, go to Zotero.org. Um, and um, Julissa can put that in there or just Google Zotero. And you can download the application and or create an account to use it online. That um, you can create an account and then download it. And um, they will be linked. And when you download the application, there should be a, um, it should automatically like we create the plugins in Microsoft Word that we're going to talk about later today. Um, and lots of things will happen with that. But, but that's the first step is creating that account. So you have the online library and downloading the desktop application. And I have all these screenshots, so you can work on that now or you can do it later. Just follow along and you'll have access to this video, um, video later if you want, want to, you know, come back for anything. So once you've you know, created an account, downloaded the application, um, you can have the application, like I have it on my, you know, my desktop computer here in my office. I also have it on my laptop and those are all synced. And how you sync things is in Zotero, in the um, desktop application, is you go to preferences and then under preferences, is this sync button and you just put the username and password that you selected online hit okay and it'll give you lots more um, advanced options after you've all if you after you've linked your accounts but that's how you do it and then um, whenever um, if it ever seems like it's not uh, going you know not syncing it's this button um, here this little green arrow button we're going to make that much smaller. Um, yeah. And throughout this, um, if you have any questions, um, you feel free to put them in the chat. And Julissa will, will make sure that I, I address those or if I, if I don't see them. I do have the chat pulled up. But um, so if you have questions, um, throw them in there. So once you have Zotero downloaded and your account all set up, collecting citations is um, what you're going to want to be doing. So one of the easiest ways to collect citations um, that I really like is you can get the um, plugin. Um, there's the Zotero connector plugin um, for Google Chrome or Firefox. Um, Zotero is um, part of the Firefox corporate family. So um, it works really well um, with Firefox, but I use it on Google Chrome and that's great. And it makes it um, very easy to collect citations because then you have this plugin. And so that's, this is what it looks like is, um, here's this article that I pulled up on the Open Access Journal PLOS One. Um, the article it's achieving health equity for all and you can see up here right next to my search bar up top circled in green is this little tiny article icon and that's the zotero connector and i click on that and it saves this link it saves the and if it's a pdf it'll save the pdf to my zotero um whatever uh there's all these different icons that it'll appear as um that'll let you know if it's going to be taking a, you know, um, a screenshot of the website or if it's going to be saving a PDF. And you can use this on websites, you can use it in databases, and it, it makes it just very simple and very easy and quick to capture these items into your Zotero account so that you can see them all later. So then once you've got them, you can see this is my, my Zotero. And it saves all of these 
citations here. Um, you know, you've got the author and the title and these icons along here that are saying if it's a book or if it's an, if it's an article. And to keep to add things in, if you want to add something in using an ISBN or a DOI um, or any of these other options, you can click this little magic wand symbol and um, put it in there and it will add the items to your library. So that is pretty, um, pretty easy. Are there any questions about adding citations? Um, these are gonna be the most straightforward ways. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about creating a citation from scratch later, but those are the automatic ways when you're using a link or using the connector. So then, once you've got your citations, you've done your exploring, is you can keep yourself organized by creating folders. So here in my Zotero, I've got my individual folders up here. Um, one's on feminist theory, on a marketing paper I wrote, on an OER chapter. Those are all my individual folders. And then down here, I have my group libraries. And group libraries are um, my collaborative projects, like this one, JNM Industrious Research Collective, um, our research projects I work on with my friend Meredith. Um, and so those are there, and both of us can see it. So I can see all of these, um, these folders and all the articles in them, and so can she. And what's really great is that when collaborating with, um, with other people at different institutions is I can save those PDFs, she can save PDFs. So um, things that we don't have access to at our library, um, she might have at her library and vice versa. So you're not both having to request things through interlibrary loan or go find the PDF is it can all be saved right in Zotero. And so that's really nice with those group folders. And how you create a group is you go on your online account and you go to groups up top. You can see this in the library, all the my individual folders still. And then under groups is you create a new group. And just put in the email address of the, the people that you're working with. So we've covered how to gather those citations using the plugin and using like the ISBN and DOIs, how to create those folders. But how do you create a citation from scratch in Zotero? So let's say that you're doing a project and you're using a lot of books. Um, how you can do that if you have, if you feel, if you wanna just, you know, put that information in is you can use the little plus symbol. So we use this little magic wand symbol to put the link in, but this little plus symbol, then you can choose what kind of resource that you're using. Um, so if you choose a book, and then over here is where you put all of the information that you have. So if you know the title, the author, um, if you have the number of pages, whatever the amount of information you wanna put in there that you can um, for, for an item. Um, if you're just creating a citation um, and you don't necessarily want to save it to Zotero or um, you're, you know, you're just creating one, um, don't want to make an account for some reason, you can use Zotero bib and this is um, just you put the, the URL in this button or in this search box and site, and then you can choose from, um, I mean, they've got just about every kind of citation style you can imagine with Zotero bit. Um, and that's just a, a great way to quickly make a citation. So more 
organizing. So we talked about collaborating with the groups. Um, so how you make a folder is collections equals folders and you use this little um, folder guy here and and create your folders. So after you've dumped all of your citations in Zotero, you'll want to, you know, you can create these folders and um, organize all your stuff so that you can have all these different projects. Um, you can always go to my library and see everything you've ever saved in Zotero, but the folders make it um, very uh, tidy and easy to use. You can also add tags. A lot of these, um, if you're if you're doing a journal article or you're you're inputting something with a DUI, DOI or um, from a library database, is it'll use subject headings um, and keywords to auto populate these tags. But you can give them tags yourself. You'll also see here, so info is where you'd find the bibliographic info, the title, abstract, that stuff. Notes is blank, you can add notes. So um, let's say you're doing an annotated bibliography for something, um, which would be a great way to keep things straight for a dissertation or thesis. Um, you know, you can read something and you put all your, your notes on something um, in there. Um, the benefit of using a tag is that you could, if you, if you were using the tags and making sure that they were consistent, not just going off of the, the auto-populated ones, is that um, you could only see, so within like this open educational resources project that I was working on, you could select only the articles that refer to OpenStax which would make it a lot easier to see which of your resources could potentially be part of um, a paragraph in your literature review. If any of you went to Jalisa's workshop on writing a liter literature review, planning and organizing a literature review um, two weeks ago, she talked about you know, using a synthesis matrix so that you can group the um, subjects of, of articles, you know, the concepts together, because that's one way of writing a literature review, and tags would be a useful way of doing that within Zotero, if that's how you decide to use it. It's just another tool to group those concepts and see which of your articles um, are about the same concepts. Does that make sense? Zotero, like many tools, um, can be used a lot of different ways, and so, you just gotta find what works for you, but but these are my ideas. No questions. Another um, great tool for uh, when you're writing a dissertation or thesis or articles later is you can have your saved searches and feeds in here. So. Um, Let's say you're writing a dissertation and your research is going to take a couple years. You want to make sure that the literature searching you do in the first year, um, you know, it'll maybe be a little bit outdated, especially depending on on what your um, field is by the time you would get done writing something. And so you can, you know, go do a search. Um, in a web of science or Google Scholar and save those, um, save a URL for that in Zotero and it'll auto populate the, um, those citations here. And um, so that way you don't have to look at it. You don't have to move it from your email to your Zotero. It just will automatically populate. And in those advanced options, you can create a folder and, and really, um, Keep those things organized so that you can keep coming back to those subjects that that you're interested in and make sure that you have all of the most recent research um, available and and that you know about it so after you have 
gathered your citations, created your citations, um, you have them organized in folders, um, and you're starting to write your uh, article or dissertation or thesis, you'll want to be inserting your citations and then creating your bibliography, which is of course, I mean the main, the main beauty of Zotero is that you don't have to do this by yourself. So uh, Zotero is great because it has um, plugins in both Word and Google Docs that I'm going to cover. So it's automatically part um, of these applications and um, so you don't have to figure out how to like connect your account to it. It's already done. So in Word, if you've downloaded the desktop app, the Zotero button should automatically populate in your um, Microsoft Word. You select Zotero and um, you get a whole new bar up here. And then you can add and edit a citation and you can decide your citation style. Like this one, Chicago Manual Style, 17th edition and click OK. And then when you are ready to insert a citation is you click that add, edit a citation and this Z comes up, this little red bar, and you start typing your, um, the, the last name of the uh, author of the article or book and they, they pop up and then when you found the right one, you can select several if you're, um, if you're, uh, you know, citing several sources in a row, you can put them all in that same little Z um, search bar, hit enter and then it inserts it for you. So let's say you write an entire paper using Chicago 17th, Chicago Manual of Style, 17th edition. And then you submit your article for publication to a journal that, you know, uses a different citation style. You can go into document preferences and just change a different citation style and it's as easy as one, two, two clicks. You know, you find the new style, click OK, and it will change the citation style for you. I would always go make sure that it like did it right. This is still a machine. <laughs> it could still make a mistake. Um, but it should be very, very easy, saving you hours of work. The same kind of thing can be done in Google Docs. There is always this Zotero option up top on Google Docs and you can add and edit a citation. It has all the same, same options as um, Word. And Jaleesa has put the Zotero word processor plugins, um, the link to the Zotero help page for that in the chat if you want more info on, on that. Zotero really does have really great help documentation. And depending on how deep you go with Zotero, you can really, you can get, you could really be a power user. Today we're mostly going over the basics of what it's good for and how to, to get started, but you can really, you can really dive, dive deep. It's a powerful tool. So after you've written your paper, you've got your citations, they're in text, they're looking sharp. Um, you'll want to create a bibliography at the end of your paper that has all of the citations um, from, from your article. So that's as simple as add or edit a bibliography and um, add edit a bibliography and it'll just populate it for you. You can also, if um, it, the ones in Word and Google Docs That'll, it'll create a bibliography automatically for you of every, of every citation that you've used in that Word doc. Um, but let's say you read a lot more than you actually cited and you want to include citations and resources that weren't necessarily cited in your paper. 
or um, you want to create a bibliography separate from a paper, you can create a bibliography from items within your Zotero application by highlighting all of the resources that, um, that you want and then uh, just right click and you can create a bibliography. And so, so that is very, very easy and the, um, you'll be able to create a bibliography and um, paste that into whatever doc you want. Okay, that is all of the, uh, the info I have. Short and sweet, half an hour on Zotero. I know there's a lot more um, options out there. Please, um, if you want to, to chat more about Zotero, you can send me an email, we can talk about it. I think um, it's one of those things that once you get in there and start using it, it's, um, I think, uh, a pretty easy to use tool, but um, I definitely, I get questions that stump me all the time from people and, and we have to do some searching together and figuring it out. And so I'm open to being your partner in discovering all of the fun things Zotero does. Um, and if you want to um, share your feedback on this workshop, if you can click the link in the chat box and uh, make suggestions so that I know what to cover for next year's workshop. Um, or if you have any questions that you can follow up, you can do that through, through the survey. We have three more graduate student essentials workshops coming up October 6th will be tips and tricks for Microsoft Word, Excel, and OneDrive. I'm excited for that. Um, October 13th, we'll be organizing your research and data management. And then October 20th, we'll be creating a research poster. Um, and I think we'll be focusing on how to do that for online conference environments, since that is what we're doing in 2020. Um, if there are any more questions, please put them in the chat. Um, but we're all done. And I'll just hang out here for a minute. Jaleesa will stop recording. And um, thank you very much for, um, for coming to this workshop today.